Hello everyone, welcome back to Ticket Thursday where we solve real world IT tickets. So I think this is the fifth episode of Ticket Thursday. So if you want to check out the other episodes, they are they are on the Ticket Thursday playlist on the channel. So in today's video, we will look into five real world tickets, discuss ways in solving and closing the tickets, and the proper communication and best practices when dealing with tickets at work. So let's get started with the tickets that we are going to solve for today's video. So for today's video, I'm using Fresh Service or Fresh Desk for my ticketing system. I'm just using the free trial and this is the same ticketing system that we use at work. So if you're dealing with tickets, the first thing that you should do, especially if there are multiple tickets that came in, at the same time, for example, the first thing that you should look at is the priority of the tickets, of course. And you should prioritize according to the status and priority. And here, of course, you are going to do the high priority or the urgent one first before the low priorities. So, for example, here we have five tickets that just came in. And this one says medium priority. So that's what we're going to do first. And that's always the best practice. Okay, so let's get started with the first ticket. It's a printer issue. Okay, so this ticket is from Sue and she said that the printer in her office is more functioning and it's printing garbled text at the top of the page and she really needs someone to reset it. Okay, so if you look into the ticket and if you decide that you want to take the ticket, for example, you should always assign a ticket to yourself you can assign it under this agent or sometimes in different ticketing systems it's called something else but you should always assign it to yourself if you're working at the ticket and also change the status to in progress for example and the next thing that you should do is to respond to the ticket so that the person would know that you have acknowledged the ticket that you are looking into the issue so for example you can respond with hi sue i can assist with this issue, I'll take a look into the printer and just provide like an ETA on when you're gonna look into the printer, for example. Like, I'll take a look into the printer in a bit. Because sometimes you might have like other stuff that you're doing at the moment and you don't really have the time to look into the issue. So it's always good to give an ETA to the customer or the client or the user so that they have an idea on when you're going to be able to resolve the issue. Okay, so now let's look into how we should resolve this issue. So she said that the printer is printing garbled text. So if you see garbled text just like this or just some random letters and numbers that are printed on the pages, it usually means that there is an issue with the printer driver. So sometimes there can be problems with the driver software, with how it communicates with the computer, the operating system, and the printer. That's why it's producing those garbled text. So usually when I'm troubleshooting issues just like this, I usually start from the very basic and the very simplest of the solutions before I move on to like updating the drivers. So what I did in here first is to cancel the print jobs on the printer itself because sometimes there are print jobs that get corrupted that could also cause this garbled text so that's one of the easy ways to fix this issue then after canceling the print jobs reboot the printer so that it would refresh all of the services and then try to print and see if it's still printing in garbled text so for my case when i was troubleshooting this issue it was resolved when i canceled the print jobs and rebooted the printer if that doesn't solve the issue you can move on to the next solution which is to update the printer driver to update the printer driver you can go to the print server and then right click on the printer that is having issues and then select properties and select the advanced tab and that's where you can find where to update the printer driver okay so there's no other ticket here with medium priority so i we can just pick on any tickets in here and let's do the scratch drive one and this is from patrick and he said hello the d drive or scratch drive is no longer available when i log in can someone map this drive for me sometimes if the user didn't provide more information about the issue like the computer name you should always ask for it so we can respond hi patrick 
can I can assist with this issue? With this issue, can you please provide the computer name of the machine having this issue? Okay, so you can send this and this ticketing system has uh, this option where you can send and change the status as well so we can set this to waiting on customer because we are waiting for him to respond he to provide more contacts in this issue so this user has two partitions on the computer the d drive is what they use for scratch drive or to dump like extra files in there and this is no longer show uh, this is this no longer shows up for him on his machine so the first thing that you should check in here to solve this problem is to go to disk management and check if the drive has been accidentally unallocated so you can type disk management onto the search bar and it should show you the disk management window and you would see in here if it is showing or the second partition is showing for example in here since i have two drives i have disk zero and disk one in here and this is where you can see if the drive is being detected sometimes the drive can be unallocated and if that happens if you see the other drive being unallocated just right click on it and select uh mark partition as active okay so in his case i didn't see the other partition so there were there was only one disk that was showing so i can fix the partition through the disk management so we can move on to another the other solution because we are not seeing the drive so the next step that i did was to reseat the cable for the drive sometimes the cables get loose and it gets disconnected so i tried doing that that didn't work in my case so the next step is i tried connecting the ssd to another computer and i used the usb to say the adapter and see if that drive is being detected in another different computer so that didn't work for me so i tried the next step which is to connect a different drive to the adapter and see if there is an issue with the adapter so the other drive worked and it's not an issue with the adapter so it means that we just have a bad drive that needs to be replaced so that's what i did and since it's a scratch drive really didn't have to back it up so it was just an easy swap for a new drive okay so let's move on to ticket number three so let's do this adobe access needed okay this was submitted by edgar he said hello can i have adobe access added to my account on this computer he needs photoshop for social media creation okay so what you're gonna do first is to assign this ticket to yourself and then for this example this is this ticket is what we usually call the user access so it's not really an issue that you have to fix or troubleshoot there's a lot of times where users need access to different systems and we also get tickets from that so i'm just going to show you that we also get this kind of tickets just to give you an idea on the other tickets that we are getting so not all the tickets are about troubleshooting or fixing the issue some are request for system access Okay, so since I can show you how we really give access to the systems because it really depends on what your company uses, I'm just going to show you what the response would be if this issue or this ticket was submitted. So I'm just going to respond with, hi, Edgar, IT will take care of your Adobe Photoshop access. I'll let you know once it's ready. So always let the user know that you're working on it and you can put pending in here because you're waiting until it's all set. So just make sure that you res always respond to the user that you have acknowledged the ticket and give them an update. Okay, so let's move on to the next ticket. I see this. Okay, so let's do this computer issue in here. So this is from Anna. She said, my main monitor isn't stable and it will face down unless there's something behind it to keep it facing upright. Okay, so this looks very vague and she didn't also include a lot of information in here just like where she's sitting sometimes you really have to ask more questions to help you also fix the issue like in this case i think anna was an intern so, so i really didn't know where she was sitting so if that's the case and there's not a lot of information you can always ask right away like hi anna i can't assist with this issue let me know where your desk is located okay and uh, to waiting on customer so this issue was a quick fix, just have to tighten the screws and the monitor mount and that's it. Okay, so let's move on to the last ticket that we have. This is a phone issue. Okay, so it says phone issue with room north and office lines. So this ticket is nice because she provided a lot of information in here like what extension number, what the location of the room is. So we really don't have to ask more information from Lisa and this really helps us 
fix the issue faster. So I hope that every, I really wish that every user is like this. Okay, so sometimes you also get tickets regarding phones and not just computer issues or computer requests because phones, most of the phones in businesses right now, nowadays are IP phones. And IP phones falls under IT professionals or the IT team's responsibilities. So IP phones are used for making voice calls over the internet instead of traditional telephone lines. It uses the Ethernet cable to connect, and the IP phone that we have at work is Cisco, and the model is CP8851. So she has stated in here with this very detailed description of the issue that she needs a new extension to an office in here because the extension that they were using is already being used. So basically, they just need a new extension number to be set up to the phone on this, on this office. So for this kind of request, we use the Cisco phone portal, which is called the Cisco Unified Console. And this is the system where we manage phones, add new phones, extensions, and users. So this is what the portal looks like. And we just usually add the extension into this directory number and just add the necessary description to it. And then, of course, save the configuration. It's always best practice to close the tickets when you are done fixing them. So the manager could also see that you've been working on things. And it will also show people that IT team is really working on fixing things. And this is also to show that you're doing your due diligence. And it could also help in promotion. For example, if the manager would see that you're working on a lot of tickets, you're always making progress with your tickets and always updating. And it would show how hard worker you are and that you are very committed and dedicated to the job. Okay, so that would be it for today's video. I hope that you learned something and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Ticket Thursday. Thank you so much for watching.